Hello everyone, I'm Sebastian Y and this is Econometrics. In this video I'm going to show you some basic techniques for using time series data in Stata. I've loaded up a data set of monthly sales figures for the Xbox 360 from the month of its launch, November 2005, all the way down to December 2014. For each month we have the number of Xbox 360s sold and the number of Xbox 360 games that came out in that month. This is data that I collected personally for a paper that I wrote several years ago. The first thing we need to do with any time series data set is set up the time variable. Our data set here has a date variable that is called MON for month, and we need to convert these strings into a usable T. The first thing we're going to do is convert these strings into a date that Stata can actually use. To do that, we're going to generate a date variable. We can call it anything we want. I'll call it usable date. And we're going to use the date function in Stata. This function takes a string and converts it into a date that Stata can actually use. We need to put in our string variable, and then we put in the format of the date. So we need to go back to the data browser and look at the actual format of the date. And what we can see here is that it is month, day, and then year. You might see dates in other orders like year, month, day, and we need to pay attention to which one of those it is. This one is month, day, year. And so we're going to put in quotation marks MDY, all in caps, for month, day, year. You might put in YMD if it's year, month, day, and so on. If we go back to the data browser to check out our new variable, you can see that we have a number in the usable date column. This is the number of days that have passed since January 1st, 1960. If you have a date from before 1960, this will be a negative number. Now what we need to do is convert this over to a time variable that goes from 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Depending on the frequency of your variables, you might have to do different things to figure out how to do that conversion. What I'm going to do here is take advantage of some other state of functions. I'm going to generate a month variable that I'm just going to call m, and once you have the date set up as a usable date, you can then use the month function to pull out the month from any date. And I'm going to also generate y as the year, and this is the same thing, you can pull out the year from any date variable in Stata. If we check out our data browser now, we can see that we've got the month and the year, and that those match up with our original strings. At this point, it might be a nice thing also to convert our usable date variable into something a little bit more human readable. To do that, we use the format command. So we're going to format usable date, and if you look in the Stata help files, you can see all the different formats we can use here, but one you might want to know about is just percentage sign td. And what this is going to do is it's just going to convert this into a date that we can actually read, 1 November 2005. Now to create a t variable, we want this to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So I'm going to generate a t variable. I'm going to generate t. First of all, we want November 2005 to give us 1. So first of all, we need to take year minus 2005 because that's where our data set starts. And then I'm going to multiply that by 12 and then add on the month. But since we're starting in November, we need to take month minus 10 so that November will give us the very first observation. And as you can see here, I forgot that I named them Y and M instead of year and month, easily fixed. Okay, now you can see we've got a T variable that goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. We're going to make use of that variable later. For right now, the next thing that we're going to do is use the command ts set t to tell Stata that our data set is a time series data set and that t is our time variable. Once we have this set up, that's going to allow us to do a few other things later on. The first and most basic type of regression that we can do with time series is a static regression. Static regression is where we just run a regression of y on x with each date being an observation. So I'm going to run a regression of sales on games. So this is going to tell us what's the relationship between the sales of Xbox 360s in each month as a function of how many games came out in that month. You can see we have a positive here showing that the more games that came out, the more Xboxes were sold. 
but we might need to do a little bit more work here to see if what we've done is accurate. First thing we're going to do is put in a trend. To add a trend to his time series regression, all we need to do is add our time variable into the regression. And what we can see here is that there is a slight upward trend in the sales of the Xbox 360, but it's not really statistically significant. Let's make a quick line graph of sales over time. We're going to put in the usable date variable. The trend maybe isn't linear, but might be quadratic. You can see it goes up and then back down. So let's create a square term and then add that into our regression. And that looks a little bit better. We've got a big positive coefficient next to t and then a smaller negative one next to t squared indicating an inverted u relationship, which is sort of what we saw on the graph. Another thing that might happen is instead of a strict linear trend, we might have a constant growth or shrink rate as a percentage change. As always, the way that we model a percentage change in a regression is to use the natural log. So I'm going to generate the log of sales and then put that into a regression. I'm going to regress log sales on games and just a linear trend. And what we can see here is a negative percentage change in sales every month. But if we go back to the graph that we made earlier, we can see that we might have missed something just with our trend. And we see these seasonal spikes going on. And this is a result of holiday sales. So we might want to add in some way to capture this seasonality. To do that, we are going to make use of our month variable that we already created, that's M, and create a dummy variable for each month. We can use the I dot structure to quickly get that done. So I'm going to go back to our level model without any logs with our quadratic trend and then add in some seasonality with I dot M. What we can see here is that we now have dummy variables for every month except for January, which is our base. The big ones that we notice here are that November and December have significantly higher sales than the rest of the months. Another thing that we can notice here is that the R squared is very high, despite the fact that we only have one actual variable in here, games. The rest of it is just trends and seasonality dummy variables. We don't actually have any meaningful information about what's causing our sales to change. One way to deal with this is to detrend the data. To detrend the data, we need to run regressions of our dependent variable and all of our explanatory variables on the time variable and any seasonal variables as well if you want to deseasonalize the data, and then use the residuals from those regressions in our main regression. First, I'm going to run the regression of our dependent variable sales on t, t squared, and then all of our month dummy variables. Now we need to predict the residuals, and you can name those whatever you want. I'll call them sales R for residuals, and then add the residual option. We're going to do the same thing with games. Predict the residuals. Now we will run a regression of the residuals of sales on the residuals of games, and take a look at these results. We see the result we get is negative 778.8 as our coefficient estimate. If we go back up to our original regression of sales on games, t, t squared, and the month dummy variables, we see we have the exact same coefficient. In that regression, our r squared was about 0.73, and once we have detrended, our r squared has gone down to almost zero. That shows us that most of the explanatory power in our original regression was down to the month dummies and the trend. That's where I'll leave it for this video. I'm going to follow up with another video showing some more time series models. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching.